It worked. <laughs> Let me show you. Hello, friends. How are you doing? I'm so excited to introduce you today to my friend, Krista. She is a successful realtor who went on to start a side business um, and become very successful in that side business. She makes up to five figures a month doing that. This year, she's going to share more of this with you in just a minute, but this year she was able to uh, bring her husband home, which is super cool. She is a super busy mom, realtor, entrepreneur, and I'm really excited for you just to hear her story because I know there's so many people out there that already have an income that already have a job that they really love. Like she enjoys being a realtor. It's not that she didn't enjoy it, but having a second stream of income, having a plan B is always a good idea. So Krista, share with me a little bit first about you before like getting into network marketing. Yeah. So, um, I was a teacher for 12 years and I actually started a network way back then network marketing, but it was within a different industry and I kind of dabbled in it. I wouldn't ever say I worked it full time, but I made a good, just little extra income, right? Because teachers, we all know, don't get paid enough for what they do. And so after, um, 12 years of teaching, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So I left to pursue passions in marketing because I had learned through network marketing that I really did have a passion for that. And so I went into the corporate world, into marketing. Um, and then 2020 happened and, I lost my job as a lot of people did. Right. Mm. And so for the first time I was like, so like very aware of what that plan B could be. And so thankful at the time that I did have that. Now I want to be very clear that plan B that I had at the time was not enough to support me mm. or us as a family, but it was something that I had been comfortable with for so long. And so I say that because in this moment of my life, I had no business starting all over again with, two new careers, but I knew that if I wanted something different and I wanted a solid plan B that could actually carry my family, if need be, I had to make some changes. And so that's kind of how I went into real estate and then also came into Trinot as well. Wow. All at the same time. That's so crazy. Yep. <laughs> Just one of those by themselves is a lot. And you know, one of the things that people don't realize is that in real estate, just like network marketing it is all about your personal performance and what you're willing to put into it. Because statistically, only 10% of realtors will ever sell anything. Yep. Like the 10% the of the people that actually get their real estate license, like I have it all written down somewhere because Ray yeah. Higgins told us one time, but it's not very many people. And the same is true in network marketing. And it's not because real estate doesn't work or that network marketing doesn't work. It's just you have to be willing to put in the work. So can you share a little bit of that? Because I know sometimes people think that you have to be this all in a hundred hours a week kind of thing. So share a little bit about being a mom, being a realtor and where you're finding the time to do this. Yeah, that's funny. Cause I literally just had this conversation with a friend yesterday. He was asking me about the business and he said, just five minutes, tell me, you know, tell me how you do this. And so I was like, okay, let me think for a second here, because for me, because I do have all of these things going on, it's not a clock in clock out type of thing. Right. And I know that a lot of business coaches will tell you, you need to go into your office. You need to set time. You need to set timers and stuff that doesn't work for my life because there are days where it's very heavy real estate. And there are days where it's very heavy turn on. And there are days where my daytime is a little more open, but I will literally work all night. And so my, my schedule kind of shifts. But what I want to say is that you can fit it into pockets of time that you might not even be aware that you have. And I think back to when I was a teacher and I was just getting started, there were times that I would take a bathroom break just so that I could respond to a message. I mean, literally within two minute periods of time throughout the day, I would sit in my car before I drove away from school to do some of the things that I needed to do because I knew when I got home that mom turned on and I, and I wasn't going to have that time right then. And so it's doable. You can balance multiple things. It's just being really, really intentional with the time you have and also giving yourself grace that your schedule is not going to look the same every day. And that's part of why I love what I do, right? It's not the same nine to five. You've got the same routine every day. It is very different. And you just have to be willing to kind of ebb and flow and plug in where you can. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you said that. And also about being a teacher, I was actually talking to someone that is in, in my organization um, and she is a teacher and she desperately wants out. And, and as I'm sure you know, so much has changed in that profession, not as far as being the teacher to the children, but just the rules and regulations. Yep. And, yep. And, and so it makes it very difficult, especially for someone who has strong beliefs in certain one way or the other. Right. Yep. And so 
what would you say to the teacher watching that is terrified to walk away? Because she, she wants to, her dream is to walk away and to be able to do this at the level exactly where you are is where she wants to be. And that will, that will be able to make her walk away. So can you share a little bit of that with even the teacher that might be watching? Yeah. So I remember when I decided, and and I'm very much that if I decide it, it's happening. Like there's no turning back. And I see it, my children too. Like, it's like the decision's been made when I decided, like, I can't teach anymore. I remember that year. And I was talking to my husband and I wanted to go into real estate. And so I'm going to kind of relate it there because it'll all come back. But I really wanted to go into real estate from teaching. I had a friend who I used to teach with that was doing it and she was super successful. And in that moment, I was like really weighing the pros and cons and Yes, teachers do not make a lot, but it is a consistent full-time salary. And I was looking at real estate going, hmm, I don't like, what if I don't make any income for a full year? What if I don't like, what if there's too many what ifs here, right? And again, at that time, the company I was with in network marketing was not a full-time income. It was not anything I could rely on. And so I did the safe thing. I went ahead and went into marketing because that was my two choices, right? And it wasn't until I had no other choice, right? but to find something else because my job was literally taken from me that I realized I can make that same income. It's just going to take me reframing and being able to put in hours and and be, you know, willing to push forward and kind of put that hustle in. And what I want to say is that I look back at the income that I have made in the last two years and there is no way, it doesn't matter if I would have taught for the rest of my life, there is no way that I would have ever been able to get there. And I say that because yes, it was scary at times, but knowing that it was either this or go back to teaching where I, that for me was an absolute no, um, I had to make it work. And so I think kind of being able to just step out in faith and know that there are so many more, like there's so much more room for growth as mm-hmm. far as income goes. Cause that is the scary part, right? Uh, oh. is, leaving teaching. Um, there's so much more room for growth in there that it will be worth it. If you're willing to plug in and just like really pedal to the metal. Um, and then just like outside of the income part of it, just being there right for my kids. Now I get to go to lunch with them, which I couldn't do before I get to go on field trips with them. I get to go pick them up if they're not feeling well, like it's just so much more freedom financial and just time that it was a hundred percent worth it. Scary in the beginning, but a hundred percent worth it. And, and there's just so much room for growth that you don't have inside that teaching career. It's almost like I was listening to a podcast the other day when I was on the stair stepper uh-huh. <laughs> and um, it was talking about having an exit date. And, yeah. and so sometimes we, we decide on an exit date and sometimes an exit date is decided for us. And it sounds like for you, an exit date was decided for you. Yeah. And what that exit date does is it forces you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do because you're comfortable. And then sometimes I was even having this conversation with my son-in-law and my daughter. Sometimes we, a paycheck is enough to keep you stuck. Mm -hmm. And it is the most unfortunate thing because there's, there's so much more out there for you when you decide that you're not bound by a paycheck. And, and, and most people don't even realize it because they've just, that's just what they've always ever had. Right. Let's share a little bit about getting to bring your husband home this year and how that came about and and, and just how exciting that is and what that looks like for your family to be a full-time family. Yeah, I'm so excited. He actually comes home at the end of this school year because he is such a wonderful man and he could not leave his kids halfway through the year. That was the plan. He was supposed to come home. He's a teacher too, right? He's a teacher too. Yep. And so I'm very excited. Again, very nervous. Like I get it. I'm, I'm literally put back right into that spot of where I felt before of like, Ooh, what if, what if, but I'm, you know, putting my focus on, I know we've done it before. We're going to do it now. And the exciting thing about it is like, when we talk about next year, like him being able to ride his bike to school with my, which will be a middle schooler at that point and being able to take and pick up my younger son and giving me more time to focus on these things. And then he absolutely is all in on Trinot. And so what started as me working his account for him, he now is doing. And so it's so fun to get to do it together. We get on calls together. He's passing people to me. Hey, I started this conversation. Can you finish this? And so having something that we're already such a close knit family and team, but having something that we can do together that like, I'm so passionate about, it is so much fun because it's always been my thing. Right. And now it's our thing. And just knowing that my kids are going to get to be around us as a whole so much more something I didn't have growing up. And oh my gosh, I'm just so excited for that. So excited. Um, what would you say to the the woman or the man out there mm-hmm. that is that 
that really does want to supplement some income. Maybe they, they want to be like you and they want to just get out of what they're doing and totally replace the income, but they're, they're scared. They're nervous. Yeah. Um, what would you say to that person? I would say, just try it, right? Like just jump because the worst thing that can happen is you keep doing what you're already doing now. I think that's where some people get so tied up is that, well, what if I do this and I don't do well at it? Well, if you're already doing something else that's that, you know, you're comfortable with, maybe start this as a supplemental so that you still have the full time to fall back onto or, or whatever that looks like. But if you don't try, you will never get there. And that's kind of, you know, what I learned when I left teaching and I didn't try real estate and I didn't, you know, do the things that were scary. I went into what, okay, I know marketing. I know I'm going to have a full-time income. In fact, it was a step back. I was making less than I was as a teacher, which now, like I look back on it, I'm like, what was I thinking? But it was consistent. Right. And so mm -hmm. it was a safe option. And so I look back at that now and I'm like, if I would have only done it then, right. What could have happened by now? But you know, you can't live in that space. So I say, jump, just try it because if it doesn't work out, okay, you're, you're still where you are now, but if it does work out, my gosh, like the changes that could absolutely make in your life are yeah. absolutely like tremendous. And I say like, start small, if that feels comfortable, like if you're not like me, that's like a, I made a decision. I'm all in person, start small, look at, you know, what could you um, replace in your bills? Like, is it your grocery bill? Okay. What does that look like every month for your family? Let's try to replace that first or your car payment, or just start with something small, do that and then move forward. And you'll start to see how that kind of compounds and can very quickly turn into something really big. Yeah, absolutely. And then I have one more question that I want to ask mm -hmm. you just being an entrepreneur and doing this and your kids watching, Mm -hmm. um, what do you feel like as a mom that does for your kids and what they're watching happen as they grow up? Yeah, that's so funny. Cause just the other night in the kitchen, my oldest who is 11 said, Hey mom, can I have a turn on account? And I was like, well, buddy, when you're 18, you know, and so we started talking about what that would look like for him. And I, oh my gosh, I love it so much because do I want them to go to college? And yeah, absolutely. But here's the deal. I went to college and I'm doing nothing in my life now that needs a degree, right? Real estate doesn't need a degree. Network marketing doesn't need a degree. And so I want them to not think inside the walls that like, I am, I guess my generation maybe, or, or how I was raised was like, this is it. You go to college, you get a job and that's your life, right? For the rest mm -hmm. of your life. And so I want them to see that there are other options that I want, especially when their father comes home to see like, dads don't have to, or boys don't have to show up and go to nine to five every day. Like there are other options out there that can make you happy. So as of now, my 11 year old either wants to work for Trinot or play on the Savannah, Savannah bananas. I don't even know. What <laughs> what that is, but he thinks he's going to be a Savannah banana someday for basically. Hey, those are really <laughs> hard. I love that because I'm, I'm like you, I believe that college is great. If it's yeah. necessary for what you need to do for a living, like if you're going to be an nurse, you got to go to college. If you're going to be a doctor. You got to go to college. If you're going to be an attorney. You got to go to college. If you're going to be a teacher. You got to go to college, but just to go to college, to go to college, to come yeah. out with a bunch of debt that will, I mean, I literally know people my age and I'm 46 years old that are still paying off their debt. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. Cool. Like that's insane. Yeah. That, and, and like you, like they don't even use the degree. And so I think just going to college to say you have a degree, it's crazy when there's opportunities for entrepreneurship or honestly, you and I know that entrepreneurship provides the most freedom um, because some of the most miserable people that I know are, it's, it's because they're tied down by a job and a boss and a schedule that they, mm -hmm. and, and they, they're constantly looking for a way to escape their life. Yeah. And my whole thing is I wanted to have a life that I didn't need a vacation from. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, I found myself in, in the last few years of teaching and I know it's so bad, but I was literally every Monday I was counting to Friday, every, you know, after every break, I was counting till the next break. And then I knew after uh, Christmas break, how many days till spring break and how many days till the end of the year. And that's not a way to live your life. Like I was literally counting my life away by trying to get to that next break. And that's the thing now, like there are days I wake up and I don't even know what day of the week it is because it's just, I I'm doing what I love and there's not a countdown for anything other than, you know, exciting, fun travel things. Right. Right. Well, and then think about this too. Again, I was listening to a podcast this morning with Ed Milet and Brandon Burchard, Brendan Burchard, and it was talking about, because he had a near death experience and, and being at the end of your life or nearly at the end of your life. And is that where you want to be? Mm-hmm. Like where all you did was look forward to the, instead of looking forward to each day and what it brings, dreading each day and looking forward to it ending, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's just, it's just life is so incredibly short. And so I would yep. just encourage people to, to take a look, if nothing else, take a look. So here's what I want you to do. Yeah. 
just get back in touch with the person that invited you to watch this video. Um, get some more information. Take a look. If you want to ask me or Krista some more questions, um, get the person that invited you to put us in a three-way chat with you. We'll answer questions for you um, and help you make an educated decision about why we decided to come here because there's a lot of options out there. There really are. And we're not going to tell you it's easy. We're going to show you how we're going to give you a roadmap and we're going to show you how to do it. But there is work involved. But once you do, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't know about you, Krista, but I'm unemployable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm 100% <laughs> unemployable now yeah. um, because of this industry and what it's done yeah. for my life. And I know you feel the same. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, it's been great having you on. Thank yeah. you for jumping on it, guys. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.